Hello fellow adventurers and welcome back to Word Safari. Today on our excursion we are going to look at uh, a family of words that I'm sure is near and dear to everybody's heart, uh, especially the kindergartner inside all of us, and that is dinosaur words. Uh, this is a great set of words that have some really interesting etymologies uh, and, and really come from some, uh, from some great Greek words and sometimes some Latin words. So let's go ahead and uh, go on the safari together. Uh, let's start with the word dinosaur. Uh, the word dinosaur is probably the one that you are most likely to know about because we hear about the etymology and it's not difficult, uh, but I might be able to give you a little bit more information on it than you may have heard before. Um, the word dinosaur comes from two Greek words. Uh, those Greek words are dinos and sauros. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We get the dino part from dinos and the sauros or the sore, sorus part from sauros. Okay, um, what you may not know is this word dinos in ancient Greek is actually a pretty complicated word. Um, you may have heard it translated as terrible uh, or even awesome or something like that and that is a perfectly good translation. That word can totally mean terrible or awesome but it doesn't necessarily mean terrible in the uh, really bad kind of way. It means terrible in the sense that it, it, it causes fear, it causes you to be afraid. Our word terrible actually comes uh, from the same root word as terror, uh, which comes from a Latin word that means to be afraid. So terrible means it's so amazing that, that you freak out. I mean, that's really what the word danos means in Greek. Uh, but in ancient Greek, it can also come to mean something like super cool, right? We have, even in English, in most languages, there are there are words that mean something like awesome or terrible, like the word awesome, uh, that come to just mean really cool or sweet or or some whatever slang you want to fill in there. Okay, so I've entitled this uh, this safari uh, "Sweet Lizards" because that's one possible translation of the word dinosaur, uh, and I think it it kind of gets across the idea of what we're talking about when we call these dinosaurs. They are really cool lizards. All right. Uh, so that's that's what dinosaur means, and again, you can translate dinos in a number of different ways. Uh, so let's talk about uh, some specific kinds of dinosaurs, some specific species uh, that are involved here. Of course, the most famous kind of dinosaur, this is probably not a uh, controversial comment when I say this, is T-Rex, and as you know, T-Rex is short for Tyrannosaurus Rex, all right? We can break that up into three parts, Tyranno, Saurus, and Rex. Now, you may know this one too, because again, it's not too complicated. Uh, the Tyranno part comes from the ancient Greek word Tyrannos, which, uh, which means a tyrant or ruler. And of course, we get our English word tyrant directly from this. So it's, it's pretty clear what the etymological uh, connection is. Um, this word in ancient Greek was not just used for a tyrant who was necessarily, like in the modern English, a bad person or something like that. Um, there were good Turanoi and bad Turanoi in ancient Greece, okay? Um, but what the Turanoi usually weren't were kings, all right? These were not usually legitimate kings who had inherited authority from their father. These would be people who would stage a coup or come into power some other way and then become the ruler of some particular city, okay? So that's basically what a Turanos is. Uh, but it didn't necessarily mean tyrant in our modern sense. Um, there's our Sauros again. And then the species name, of T-Rex is Rex. Uh, and this is interesting because we're actually mixing Greek and Latin words in this one dinosaur, okay? So Rex means king, okay? Uh, and that comes from Latin. That is the regular Latin word for king. So uh, the name is a little bit redundant because it means uh, ruling lizard king, okay? But it's a cool name and we all use it, of course, all right? Let's move on to another dinosaur that I'm sure you've heard of, and that is a stegosaur. Or stegosaurus, okay? Again, of course, we have the sour part from the lizard, so you, you know what that is by now. Um, but the very first part comes from another Greek root, uh, stegos, uh, and this word meant a roof or some kind of covering, okay? It could really be either one because, of course, the roof over your head is the covering of whatever room you're in, right? Um, so this comes from a great Indo-European root which was either stag or tag. It had the S basically as an optional addition to the front of it. Um, so when you see little pieces of words like tag or tog even, sometimes the vowel changes, that's from the same root uh, and it means something about a covering. So if you've been to science class or if you remember way back that biology class in middle or high school, uh, which is where I dragged this word out of my head from, uh, your integumentary system is your skin, okay? Because it's the part of your body that covers your whole body, hopefully, right? 
Um, so that's that's essentially where the tag in and tagumentary comes from. Uh, we also get a word from uh, from ancient Roman culture that I'm sure you're familiar with, which is toga. Okay, um, a toga is from the same root, and originally toga was just a covering. Okay, which is not a, a very you know, a creative name for the clothing that uh, Roman men would wear, but there you go, okay? It, it just comes from this uh, root that means a covering. Now, why was why were stegosauruses called this? You can probably guess why they were called a roof or covering lizard. It has to do with those, uh, those protuberances on the top of their skeleton, okay? They're covered with these really, uh, really interesting, uh, uh, whatever you want to call these, protuberances is the word I just used, that are all over the top of their body, and that's where they got their name. Uh, let's move on to uh, Brontosaurus, another one of the most uh, famous dinosaurs. Um, this is from, the, the first part of it is from the Greek word bronte, which means thunder, okay? Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Bronte sisters, uh, famous uh, Irish English poets, uh, are, are they, their name does not come from this. It actually comes from an Irish word. So, uh, so unfortunately, they are not connected to this, although that would be cool. Um, but the Greek word bronte means thunder. It's the regular word for thunder. It's the noise that Zeus makes, as they believe, um, when he uh, when he throws a uh, when he throws his lightning bolt, right? Um, so when this dinosaur was named, it was named the the Big Boomasaurus, if you want to call it that. Uh, and the reason being, it was so large that the idea is it would make booms every time it hit the earth. Um, and that's essentially where it got its name from. A very closely related dinosaur that for many years we thought maybe was just a brontosaurus, but recently uh, has been making a comeback among some, some scientists and saying this is actually a different species, is Apatosaurus. Okay, uh, where does this apato part come from? It comes from the Greek word apate, and the Greek word apate meant deceit or trick or lie or something like that, okay? And that's essentially what this dinosaur was named after. You might be wondering where did this dinosaur get its name from? Did it lie a lot or something like that? Uh, good story, obviously we would have no idea, uh, although I'm sure you can write some great fanfics on it. But the reason it got this name is because uh, because originally when its when its bones were discovered, it was mixed in with some other bones, and it also didn't necessarily look like uh, a dinosaur bone. It looked like some other related species, and so it tricked the people who looked at it first. And uh, basically, the name stuck that it was a, a, a tricky uh, and and that's why we call it an apatosaurus to this day. Okay, let's move on. Another famous dinosaur, Brachiosaur or Brachiosaurus. Um, this comes from another ancient Greek word that means uh, upper arm. The word is brachion, okay? Um, and it's basically your upper arm. It's, it's, it's this part of your arm right here between your shoulder and your elbow. Uh, ultimately, that root comes from a Greek word that means short because it's the shorter part of your arm between the two halves of your arm. Uh, I know it's not very creative, but that is where they got the word from. Uh, so uh, the brachiosaur was named because, as you can see here from this picture, or if you already know what it looks like, um, it, it's got an interesting setup as far as its arms and legs are concerned. Its arms are actually longer than its legs, what we would at least call its arms, right? Its front legs are basically longer than its back legs. Um, so, so they are uneven and it makes it kind of stand at a tilt. And it's, it's just got really long arms in general. So that is why it was named Brachiosaurus. Uh, let's move on to a really great name, which is Triceratops, uh, and this is a name that we can break up into three parts, and each of these three parts means something, okay? You can probably guess what the first part means, because this is not a difficult one to decode. Um, this is tree in Greek. Um, this is connected to words for three in other Indo-European languages, uh, including our word for three in English, right? It comes straight from the same root. Um, the word uh, trace in languages like Spanish and other languages that descend from Latin, okay, qua in French. So uh, so you can tell that this means three, all right? Uh, not too hard to decode that part. Uh, the second part is a little harder. Um, it comes from a Greek root, karat, okay? Uh, and we spell it with a C, they with a K, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and this is the Greek word for horn. Okay, um, we get the word keratin, uh, which is which is a su the substance that horns are made of, and also fingernails and things like that. Okay, it's it's kind of a horn substance. All right, um, so so that word means horn. So three means three, karat means horn. So we're talking about three horns um, because, of course, that's what the Triceratops uh, is is best known for. Those three horns. Where are the three horns? 
on its face, okay? And that's the third part of the word, which is opes. And this comes from an ancient Greek word that just means face, but it could also mean eyes, because your eyes are on your face. So you can see how those would ultimately come from the same root. We actually get a lot of words um, from this same root. Uh, optics has to do with your eyes, obviously, seeing something uh, or whatever. Optometrist comes from the same root, of course. Um, interestingly, you may not know that Europe, the ope, part of Europe also comes from the same root, at least uh, at least mythologically speaking, because in Greek mythology, uh, Europa was a princess who was abducted from uh, what's now the coast of Lebanon uh, into what's now Europe. And at least according to Greek mythology, that is where the continent of Europe got its name. If you're wondering what the Ur part, the E-U-R part uh, means in Greek, it means wide. So uh, apparently this princess was named Wide Face. I don't know why she was named Wideface. Doesn't sound like a great name to give your daughter, but that is the name she had. Uh, and you can go read you can go read, read Greek mythology if you want to learn more about Europa and where the continent of Europe ultimately got its name. But it does come back to the same root uh, that we see in Triceratops. Uh, what about Velociraptor? Okay, this is the first one we've seen that is a totally Latin-based name. We've been looking at a bunch of Greek so far. Um, both parts of this name are actually from Latin, not Greek, so that's interesting. Um, the uh, Velasa part comes from a Latin root. Now, in Latin, Vs are always pronounced like Ws, at least in classical Latin, and Cs are always pronounced hard like K. So this would be Weloki, which doesn't sound like Velasa, but it's the same word from Latin. Um, and this word in Latin meant quick or speedy, or, or something like that, okay? Obviously, we get our word velocity uh, straight from this Latin word, all right? So that velocity part means quick, and then the raptor part, any kind of raptor, whether it's a bird or a dinosaur or whatever it is, it has something to do with seizing or grabbing or snatching or something like that, okay? Um, because the, uh, the uh, Latin verb rapio means to grab or to snatch or to seize. You put the tor ending on it, and that means somebody who does that. So a raptor is a grabber. It's a seizer. Uh, it's a snatcher. It's it's something like that, okay? Um, we get other uh, words in English from the same Latin root, like rapid, okay? Rapid meaning you do something really quick. Uh, it's, 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 it's just sudden, all right? Uh, rapture, the original meaning of rapture was uh, your emo you were so happy your emotions were like seized away. All of a sudden you were just ecstatic or something like that. And obviously there are other mean meanings of rapture that have something to do with being snatched away or grabbed or whatever. So all that comes from that same Latin root that we see in Velociraptor. Uh, pterodactyl, we're going back to the Greek here, okay, uh, and there are two separate uh, roots here, both from Greek. Uh, pteron, uh, and yes, in ancient Greek, you would actually pronounce the, the both consonants, P and T, so it would be pteron, all right? In modern English, we uh, we don't do that. We don't like to say P-T at the beginning words, so we just make the P silent and say tero or something like that. But in ancient Greek, this would have actually been pteron. All right. Um, this was one of the ancient Greek uh, words for wing. It comes from a root pet, which means to fly. OK. Um, and uh, if you watched my first video uh, on uh, on uh, archi words, OK, words that have something to do with the beginning, you might remember that Archaeopteryx means ancient wing. So that dinosaur is kind of a bonus one on this particular slide because it comes from the same root, pteron. OK. Um, and then the second part of this is dactylos. All right, there's your Greek word right there, um, and uh, this means finger. So literally, this dinosaur is called wing finger, and the reason they named it that is because, as you have probably seen from pictures, it had little fingery things on its wing. So again, not necessarily the most creative name when you understand what it means, but these scientists who named these dinosaurs uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, for the most part, were, were just using their Greek knowledge, basically. They were pulling words out of ancient Greek uh, to try to name these new, uh, these new fossils that they were discovering. And of course, a little bit of bonus trivia for you. If you play Pokemon, you know quite well that they made the name of the uh, Pokemon Aerodactyl up straight off of this uh, Pterodactyl, right? Um, so Aerodactyl, the Pokemon, who looks exactly like a Pterodactyl, uh, come, the dactyl part comes from the same root back in Greek. Okay, let's look at a few more. Uh, Diplodocus is another famous dinosaur. This was another one that was really big, okay? Um, and there are three parts of this word that we can break down. Again, all of them for, are from Greek. Uh, D means two, okay? Uh, it's connected to duo and, and other words that mean two, all right? Uh, plo comes from a root that means twofold, okay? So when you put those two parts together, diplo, it means twofold which means double, okay? Double and twofold are basically synonyms, all right? Uh, if you fold something twice or really fold it once into two parts, then it's twofold, which means it's double, 
Okay. Um, interestingly, our English word fold comes from the same Indo-European root as the Greek and Latin words that have pla that mean something about folding. Okay. This could be a whole other video or set of videos, uh, but and I won't go too much into detail. But but the p became an f in Germanic. Our native English is a, is a Germanic language, and so fold and pla actually are from the same root, which is pretty cool. The l is still the same, of course. Uh, what about the last part of this dinosaur? Dokos. Or docus, okay. Um, this comes from a uh, an ancient Greek word that meant beam, like a beam that was made of wood that, that you built a house out of, or something like that, okay. Um, and the reason that this dinosaur got its name is because there are some weird formations on its tail that look like double beams that sort of strengthen the tail. Um, it's not actually because of its big, meaty legs that also kind of look like double beams, but actually that kind of makes more sense as an etymology. Uh, just a couple more, a couple more dinosaurs. Um, these last two may not be the most famous, but you can get some interesting uh, uh, etymological content out of them, okay? Hypsilophodon, all right, is another dinosaur that has three parts to its name, so we want to break it down and talk about all three of its parts. Hypsi comes from uh, the ancient Greek root hypsi, which means high, lofty, elevated, something like that. That's all that really means. Um, the loft part comes from an ancient Greek word lophos, which means a crest, okay? So the first two parts of this dinosaur's name mean high crest, all right? Uh, the idea is that it had a, had a crest that came off of its head that would kind of wave around. It was really high, and so that's where it got that part of its name, all right? Uh, the last part of its name, the odon part, comes from a Greek root that means tooth. That's all it means, okay? Um, and we get various uh, species names like mastodon uh, that have this odon root in it that mean tooth, okay? So wherever you, whenever you see an odon like that in a species, it probably comes from this Greek root that uh, that means tooth. Um, and yes, if you're wondering, it is cognate to our, our dent, like dentist words, um, because the Latin uh, word for tooth is dens dentis, and the Greek word for tooth is this odon or odon root, okay? Uh, and ultimately, although again, it would be more complicated to explain this, our English word tooth comes from the same exact root. So tooth, dentist, odon or odont, as you sometimes see it, all come from this this ancient root that does mean tooth. Okay, so so when you put all of it together, uh, this dinosaur means high crest tooth, which doesn't necessarily make sense, but it's referring to two particular uh, uh, facets of the dinosaur that are notable. It's high crest and it's teeth, although lots of dinosaurs had teeth, so maybe that's not very impressive. Last one, Deinonychus. Okay, Deinonychus is, a, is, a, is another dinosaur that is maybe a little bit less famous, um, but uh, looks very fierce. Okay, um, I've given you a picture here that, that it might be a, a more accurate reconstruction of what it originally looked like because we're beginning to think uh, that more and more the dinosaurs actually uh, were more like birds than we originally thought. They may look less like lizards and more like this nightmare bird that I've given you here uh, on, uh, on your screen here. Um, so Deinonychus, comes from, uh, first of all, our root dino, which we haven't seen since the first slide, dinosaur, okay? So they reused it here, but interestingly, um, they spelled it a little bit differently, and you can you can spell it either D-I-N or D-E-I-N, and it ends up being the same thing. It comes from this Greek root, uh, root dinos, which did have an E-N and I in it originally, so this spelling is a little closer to the original Greek, uh, just a footnote there. Um, again, so we you already know what this, uh, this word means because we already talked about it. And then the onukos, uh, the last half of Deinonychus is a Greek word that just means nail, okay? So this uh, this dinosaur means awesome nails or cool nails, but it can also mean scary nails or terrible nails or frightening nails. So all of those potential translations all make sense when it comes to trying to figure out what the name of Deinonychus means, because when we find the skeletons, that's one of its, that's one of its most uh, notable features is the really long nails uh, or claws, if you want to call them that. It's the same word in Greek, nails and claws, all right? Okay, uh, so obviously we could spend forever on a whole bunch of different kinds of dinosaurs, um, but uh, those those are the, some of the main ones and some of the really cool Greek etymologies that we have uh, that come from those words. So I'll throw it to you. What's your favorite super cool, awesome, sweet, terrifying lizard? Go ahead and comment below, uh, and I'll see you guys on the next excursion.